Good morning, good morning. All of you have gathered here today in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory be God, he's alive, he lives. How good it is to see you all here today. We are live streaming right there on Facebook and we are very happy to have each and every one of you here today. If you're watching, remind your family members, your friends, and whoever may be out there that we are here live this morning. You're more than welcome to share these videos all throughout Facebook. You know, I've been dealing with a, a lot of, of spiritual attacks all week long. And one of those things are that, you know, YouTube has decided that they're gonna shut down my main channel that I've been working on for the past 10 years because my faith violates their policy and that's what they have now determined, that my faith in the Constitution of the United States that governs over me and you, our neighbors and our friends, is no longer viable or going to be with upheld inside the, the YouTube community. Even though they're a group of, of United States Americans living in America, that they have decided to separate themselves from the common rules and laws that, that govern over the free people of America. And so <clears throat> I really feel it's just the beginning of what's going to become an extremely tough year. This year is going to be known as the year we survived. It's not going to be known as the year that was good and plentiful, but purely as a year that we were able to survive while holding the hand of God. <clears throat> and so I really feel and think that, you know, what is going to be most important in our lives this next year is our willingness to band together to protect one another and to look after one another. As family members, as friends, as viable members of our own community. And if, if we don't do it, I guarantee you no one else will. No one else will. And it's for that reason that the, the very essence of the Bible, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. It's, it's not, I'm going to wait for somebody else to do to me what I believe I'm worthy of or, or how I wish they would. It, it, those things aren't going to happen. So we got to look within ourselves to see what value can I bring to my family, to my friends, and my community. And, and you know, I, I believe that the number one thing we got to do, and you know, is take care of us first. When I say us, you know, if you're a child, taking care of your mother and your father first. If you're the father or, or mother taking care of your children first. The, the people within your immediate family must be taken care of first. First. Not second, not third, not fourth, but first. You know, the, the first sign of God's promise comes right here in honor your mother and your father. And that means showing them respect and not just respect, but listening to their teachings and instructions. We give teachings and instructions to our children and have been for hundreds and thousands of years because we believe there is care inside of those teachings and instructions. And then the same way when God says to Adam and Eve, right? Right there in the beginning, right? Here, I, I, I offer you everything. And everything in this world, you, you have dominion over. You have power over it. 
It all depends on your good stewardship. You, you are the, the highest being in the midst of all this life that, that God presented them with and put Adam and Eve right there in the Garden of Eden. You can eat from any tree within this place. All of it is at your disposal. The tree of life was even in the midst of, of them, but there was one tree that they could not eat of, the tree of knowledge, that tree that gave them knowledge of good and evil. One tree, don't eat of that because when you do, you will die. Now, is God not saying, hey, I, I care about you? I don't want you to die. I don't want you to experience harm, hurt, and death, right? Isn't that the instruction? I, I don't want you to die. I want you to live. I want you to be safe. I want you to enjoy my protection. And, and yet so many of us today ha have abandoned that idea that the teachings and instructions of a good father, of a good mother, of God, our Father, as being useless, useless. You know, we, we all want forgiveness, and I'm not saying forgiveness isn't available. Surely, if your brother sins against you seven times, 77 times a day, 149 times a day, and he comes to you 149 times every day and repents of his sins and asks for your forgiveness, we should forgive them. But as a brother, as a person, do we really think we're showing or sharing love to somebody else if we're forcing them to forgive us 149 times a day? Is inside of that love, good, care, respect, honor. But there is none in it. There is honor in the guy who says, okay, I'll forgive you, but for those who are punishing that brother 149 times every day, there's no honor or respect in that. None. And so when we say as Christians, hey, let's, let's take it upon ourselves to do good. To do good, to be righteous. To do good to our own family members, the people who raise us and protect us and feed us and clothe us and provide homes for us. Let's do good to them. And many people say, well, how dare you ask me to do good? How dare you ask me to stop sinning? And yet, <coughs> sin and the wages of sin are death. And so when we say stop sinning, why, why, why do you attack me like that? Why are you always talking about my sins? And, and all the while I'm saying, you know, because the wages of sin are death, isn't it care? Isn't it honorable? Isn't it respectful for somebody to say, hey, you know, that thing you're doing is going to cause harm, and that's not going to cause harm to anybody but yourself. And I, I would hope you could avoid the harm or the doom that, that's about to be rained out on you. You know, that thing is the same as when I look into this next year of 2023, I think it's going to be a year where we're going to be happy to have just survived it. Just to have survived it. Because love grows colder every day. Love, respect, and honor grows colder every day. And with there being people in charge or, or having authority over our freedom to speak, whatever we wish, even if you disagree, our freedom to speak and our freedom 
to the right to a religion, any religion we so choose. Our freedom of faith is all under attack because nobody sees it honorable to protect that freedom. We, we always want somebody else to do what we should be doing. I mean, the very Constitution starts out as we the people. We the people believe in these things. And we're always wanting somebody else. You, you, the whoever you are, protect over our family, protect over our speech, protect over our freedom of faith, our ability to freely think of, of what policies we so choose to govern over us, as, as if you have no right to a Christian conservative point of view. You, 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 you must bow to the narrative that, that these other people are trying to enforce while none of them stand for the things we all see as liberty and justice, righteousness made for all people. And, and so it, it comes back to we, we the people. And, and the most important people we need to be focused on and protecting over are the very people inside your family, inside a, of your family. And, <clears throat> and as believers in Christ, we, we are supposedly one member of many members inside of one body, the body of Jesus Christ. The body of Christ. We, we are to love and respect Jesus, are we not? I mean, so many people say it and they claim it, that, that I love Jesus. But if Jesus is alive right here within our own heart, how? Are you able to love Jesus if you're rejecting your brothers and sisters that you can't see? If you're withholding anything from their brothers and sisters you can see, anything good, how, how is that a display of love? And how is that good for the community? Right now, the church, and to me, the church is a, is a gathering, people being gathered together by the power of the Holy Spirit. As God gathers people together in his name, and, and if two or more are gathered in the name of Jesus, he's right there in the midst of you. And yet the church is under great attack. So many people claiming that the church is void of the Holy Spirit. And church people are, are different than religious people. Religious people are different than faithful people. And all of it, it is the devil who seeks to divide, to divide each one of us. As Jesus says, a house divided will fail. It will fall. It will crash. And how is it we think or feel that Jesus Christ is dividing us? Either we're here to gather and be a part of the gathering, or we're scattering. And in the house of God, the kingdom of Jesus Christ, is not divided. There's no division in it. And we must put on that helmet of salvation, protecting over our mind and our wisdom and our sound thinking and recognizing and understanding that not only is the house of God not divided, our own homes that we're living in should not be divided as well. It shouldn't be divided, shouldn't have division within it.
And we as a people must find within ourselves a reason to see our families as first. Love God with all of your heart, with all of your mind, with all of your soul, with all of your strength first. That's the first commandment. First, love your Father who lives in heaven. And with that comes the first blessing. Those who honor their mothers and their fathers, who honor the, the life God has given them, receive a blessing. There is a blessing in it. Not a curse. There's no punishment in it, but a blessing. <laughs> and, and so I think we, we as a people must rethink what's going on. Rethink it. You know, I'm gonna be opening, trying to open a new channel on Rumble. And if you're not familiar with Rumble, it, it is a social media outlet similar to that of YouTube, but they, they honor free freedom of religion. They honor free speech. They honor freedom of thought and expression and political opinion. No matter which side we're on, they, they honor your voice and your ability to be heard. And, and so you're gonna have to Find me over there, you know, I, over past 10 years have been able to come up with 640, you know, subscribers. And it's like that every time on YouTube, the, the moment, if I get 10 new subscribers and I just, you know, managed to gather up 10 new subscribers right there uh, in the past couple of weeks on YouTube, and immediately they come in, oh, you just violated our policy. Oh, and so now they just recently marked down three separate videos in the past three days that violate their policy. And the only thing in those videos that violates their policy is my faith in Jesus Christ. My faith in family. My faith in the church. That's what violates their policy. And that's how it's been since Jesus Christ <coughs> came into being. His faith violated the policies of Rome because he said, I believe I am the son of the living God. And because he said that, they crucified him. They killed him. And yet, are we not all making that same claim today when, when we pray, our Father who lives in heaven? Did not Jesus after the resurrection <laughs> come and, and, and declare to the world Tell my brothers I have risen. Tell my brothers I will meet with them in Galilee, right? And, and again, Jesus saying to, to his believers, his apostles, his disciples, his students, his friends, I, I call you equal, equal. And yet we have such a hard time with that for some reason. We have a very hard time. I would love to hear your comments. I'd love to hear your, your ideas, your encouragement. See, that's what the Bible says. We, we should be encouraging one another. We should be building up one another. Because if there's anybody out there in the world being broke down, <clears throat> being rejected, being despised, <clears throat> it is us, the believers. 
And so we must band together to pick one another up through encouraging words, building up one another. I'd love to hear your comments and to hear about how do you think we could get this church full of people? Because I, I, I'm tired here. I can say whatever I want. I can believe whatever I want. And I can tell you all day long about everything that's good inside of the Bible. Here, God is in control. God is our authority. Well, what, how do you think we could get these seats full? You know, I had a wonderful encounter with somebody there as I work at, at the local movie theaters on the weekends, every other weekend, which is better than nothing, gets me out of the house, allows me to have an opportunity to interact with some of the people in town. But in that, you know, there was a young lady that came and, you know, was unable to buy her snacks at, at the at the movie theater because she only had her ATM or credit card or debit card, whatever, and, and we don't accept those things cash only, right? And had all of her food picked out and her popcorn and her drink and, and then was unable to pay for it. And so I purchased that for her and some of the people said she came back the next weekend and was looking for me and was wanting to repay me for the good deed I did unto her. And then, I have never seen or heard from her since, so I was hoping to offer to her an opportunity to repay me, not with money, but with your time, by, by coming in and joining us in Sunday service. But somehow, along the way or another, there's my plan, and there's your plan, and, and then there's God's plan. And my plans and your plans are never that of God's plan. <laughs> so it didn't quite work out. You know, and, and, and I would love to have been able to explain to them of how, you know, in the same way I paid the price you owed, and relieved you of that guilt and stress and shame. Christ also pays the bill we owed. That debt, forgive us of our debts. And, and it's not, you know, I'm going to keep begging God to forgive me of my debts until he does. <laughs> the debt is paid for. The debt is relieved. It's now upon you, upon us, to believe in the power of Jesus Christ, the power of God's Word. It's up to us to believe it. And what makes it so hard to believe is when we continue living in sin. We continue, continually reject the people God has approved of, continually trying to, to convince ourselves that nobody is approved of God until I approve of it. No word is of God until I have approved of it. No teaching is of God until I have approved of it. And there is nobody out there considered to be God's children until I approve of it. But that is idolatry, and that's what God warns us against, our own idolatry. God isn't seeking our approval. <clears throat> He's seeking for our faith and the things he has already approved of. And he has approved of us. He's approved of us all, not here to divide us. I'm here trying to ask you to, to believe in God, that 
you know, if we're going to get through this next year of trials and tribulation, it's going to happen because we're holding tightly to the hand of God who promises to get us through it. But we got to recognize that the unseen God is very much alive within the believers, all the believers. You know, Peter, after denying Jesus Christ, those three times, right? And, and this happened the very night Peter was claiming and saying to the Lord, you know, I'm ready to go to prison for you. Not only am I ready to go to prison for you, I'm ready to lay down my life for you. We all have the right words. We all know what to say. But words absent of action are meaningless. And as Jesus reminds Peter, your, your lips speak wonderful words. And your lips are very near to me. But just because your, your spirit is willing, that, that weakness of your flesh is going to fall. It's going to fail. In fact, this very night before the rooster crows next morning, you're going to deny me three times. And that's, that's the strength of man without Christ. You will fail, and absolutely nothing is possible. But with Christ, with Christ strengthening us, Peter later, Acts chapter 12, Later, Peter is in prison. And we could see that many different ways. Imprisoned by, by the chains of his own grief, his own sorrows, his own guilt, his own shame, whatever it is. Or, or maybe he's being imprisoned by the authorities at, at bay, right? And it all comes down to, if God asked you to do something, and the whole world stood against you, would you obey God? Here's Peter locked in chains. He's got guards surrounding him. He's in prison. And an angel of the Lord appeared. Peter wasn't sure it was so miraculous he almost believed he was dreaming or seeing a vision, but couldn't believe it was a reality until after he had followed the angel right out of the prison. So he says, stand up, and the chains fell off of his hands. He stood up, follow me, and the gates opened, and they walked right out of that prison. Now, there was people praying. James, the brother of Jesus, had just been killed a few days earlier. Now, the plot by Herod was to kill Peter. And yet, there, there were people praying. And Jesus, or excuse me, Peter goes right to the house of those who were praying knocking on the door. A young woman named Rhoda comes and opens it or doesn't quite open it. Who's there? It's me, Peter. And she thought she saw a ghost. Peter's ghost. Couldn't believe it. Was astounded, was astonished, amazed. Runs off and tells all the people in the house, Hey, Peter is there at the door knocking, wanting to come in. 
No, it's not Peter. Peter's in prison. Peter's locked away. He's about to be killed. That, that's, that ain't Peter. No, 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 it's Peter. And finally, after some convincing, they, they come down and, and open the door, and sure enough, it's Peter, and Peter comes walking in, and we wonder, why were they so astounded? Why were they so amazed? Because Christ in Peter was the answer to their prayers. In the same way, Jesus says, I stand at the door knocking, and if you would open that door, I would come into you. Not just into our lives, in to you. And then there's Peter knocking at the door. I am the answer to your prayers. Open the door. What, what's wrong with being the answer to somebody's prayers? The answer to someone's prayers. Instead of the reason to their problems. You understand. Many people have many problems in our world and in our lives today. Are we the cause of those problems? Or are we the answer to those prayers? That, that's uh, a question only you and I can answer for ourselves. And that's salvation, to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling by looking into ourselves and judging ourselves, not to condemn ourselves, but to see what good can I produce? Could I be better? Am I on the right path? Am I doing the right things? Christ in Peter was the answer to their prayers. And, and they were amazed. How much greater is it to be the answer to somebody's prayer than to be the one praying? You know, that's something we, I think we're missing in our world today. We all have reason to reject and despise our neighbors, but not many of us have reason to encourage and build up our neighbors. And why? What's, what's the breakdown? What's the thought process behind that? You know, can it change? Because I would certainly love to see this church filled with people, but it comes through the will and the determination of people who want to see it filled and praying over it. And there's many people who've been praying over it. I've prayed over it. Now we, we, we have to come and believe, okay, God is desiring to answer that prayer, and, and how he's going to answer that prayer is by endowing us with the, the power to do it, with, with the wisdom to get it done. If God is with us, then, then what's holding us back from doing the things it takes to get these things done? So I look forward to your comments, your encouragement, your wisdom, your willingness to, to build up this place. There's nothing wrong with gathering together like-minded people who have a like spirit. 
all driven for a desire to fellowship with one another, to create friendships with one another, and to worship God with each other. In that, there's no sin, there's no wrong. In the same way, there's no sin in <coughs> forgiving your brother who sins against you, who has violated you. There's no sin in forgiveness. But can we ask ourselves, are we honoring the person we say we love if we're forcing them always to forgive us for the wrong we know we're doing? Let us work together to build one another up not just in prayer, but deeds working through faith, or faith working through love. You know, and that, that's what the whole Bible is there speaking of and based on. Faith working through love. And even James says, faith without deeds, is dead. It's worthless. Somewhere, somewhere along the line, we got to ask ourselves, do I even want to be the answer to someone else's prayer? And if I am the answer to that person's prayer, should I have a grudge in my heart? Should I be upset? Should I be angry about it? Or should I feel good about it? Right? Because God was well pleased in Jesus being the answer to our prayers. Let us do the same. As Jesus says, everyone and anyone who loves me will obey my commands. That is love for God. And in that comes a great blessing. A great blessing. You know, taking care of your family first, there's nothing wrong with that. Family, God first. Family second. Community third. And then yet, we are family in Christ. God is our Father. And the community of believers, it's all one. It's all one. One together. One. Not separated. But it's all been joined together as one. And this is what's going to protect us. It's going to protect us. It's going to protect our, our freedom to speak. It's going to protect our freedom to religion. It's going to protect our communities and, and our families. You know, Eliza was being fed by God, by the ravens, right? And he was hiding out in, in the wilderness. As Elijah said, there would be no water no rain until my word says there's water or rain. And so a great drought came upon the whole land, and even Elijah was experiencing the drought. And there he is, drinking water from the little trickling brook out in the middle of the wilderness, and, the, and God commanded the ravens, their little tiny feet, taking him little pieces of bread and, and dropping them at his feet for food. He did that for a time, and then an angel of the Lord appeared to Elijah and said to Elijah, go down to town. There's a widow there who's gonna feed you. Go down and meet with that widow, right? And so Elijah goes down to town to meet with the widow, and sure enough, the first person he sees as he's coming into town is this old lady 
who has one child, and she's going around gathering and picking up sticks. Elijah comes and says, woman, what are you doing? Ah, oh, I'm picking up these sticks, going to build a fire, and then I'm going to bake our last meal. I have enough food or enough flour and oil to make one biscuit. One biscuit, and me and my only son are going to eat that biscuit and then die. That's all I had. Elijah says, well, if you feed me first of your biscuit, and you're there making the biscuit, make me a little biscuit for me and feed me first. And God will replenish your flour and your oil and so long as I live here, so long as I'm here, right? Who are you, stranger? <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm Elijah. I'm a man of God. It's amazing when Elijah's out there, you know, participating in the slaughtering of Jezebel's false prophets. Nobody believed him. Nobody believed he was a man of God. comes to the woman and feed me first. Take care of me first. And then God will reward you. It's all your needs. And so she gives in. <laughs> makes her little fire, makes the biscuit, and feeds Elijah first. Gives him something to eat and then God rewarded her with enough flour that lasted the entire time and oil that, that Elijah was there at her house something like six months of flour and oil because she believed he was a man of God and when, when the flour came in abundance and the oil was there in abundance. She said, now I believe you are a man of God. How can we say we love God? If we have good, no matter how small it is, if we have something good and we withhold it from the person we're standing in front of, how can we say we love God? And that be the truth. It's impossible. It's impossible. It can't be done. And so I'm asking each and every one of you to think about this during this week. What's really important to you? What do you really value in life? Do you value your children, your parents, your grandparents? Who and what do you value most in life? And I, and I really want you guys to think about this. It's important. It's important, especially in, in a year that we're about to go into that's full of testing and trials. Struggles and, and disappointments. If we're not going to love one another, who is? Who's going to love us? If we're not going to encourage one another, who's going to encourage us? If we're not going to be a part of the building up of one another, who's going to build us up? Who's going to do it? But 
Let's think about those things as we go through this week and reminding ourselves we don't worship God on Saturday or Sunday. We worship God every day and our worship for God is our obedience to his commands. And his commands aren't burdensome. They're not hard to obey. Love others as you would have them love you. Respect and honor others as you would have them respect and honor you. It's not difficult. It's easy. And in doing those things and practicing those things, you don't have to ask another person for forgiveness. Because there's no sin in them. There's no sin in it. And that's God's desire for our life. That the whole family would be protected. That the whole family would be honored. That the whole family is respected and, and it's not going to happen until we put the whole family first first not last but first and if we do that we will have our joy returned to us so many people in the world today are upset, frustrated, depressed, feeling rejected, broke down, broken hearted, because they have been treated as though they were the tail. The tail. Let us grab hold of the tail and make it the head. The head. I want to pray for you all. Heavenly Father, I thank you for taking the time to be with us once again. We thank you. We thank you for your forgiveness. We thank you for the price you paid to cover our debts. We thank you for the strength we have to forgive those who have debts against us. We thank you, Father, for your encouraging word. We thank you, Father, for your willingness to build us up. We thank you for the strength we have within our own hearts and minds to look at ourselves and into our bodies and into our wisdom to see what's good for all. We thank you for the wisdom we have. We thank you for living in us, moving through us, and breathing through us. The very air we breathe is your life. And you have been here with us through all our struggles, through all our pains and disappointments. And for that, we thank you. We thank you, Father, because without you, we are empty and void of all things good. And so we thank you. We ask that you protect us by leading us away from temptation and delivering us from the hand of evil. Amen. I still am providing live streams each and every weekday <clears throat> on a, a secondary YouTube channel called Our Father's House of Prayer, no longer David Cecina, but Our Father's House of Prayer. So you might have to search that out if, if you want to get or be a hold of our daily bread that's given out each and every day. It's a 9.30 in the morning, our time, mountain time, live stream. And uh, you can be a part of that 
but it is recorded for those of you who schedule doesn't line up. And you can see that and watch that at your own convenience. It's real good, in-depth Bible study. You want to know God, you got to get into the Word of God in order to know Him. And so I, I ask it and invite each and every one of you to come be a part of that and, and to let your family and friends and everybody out there on Facebook know that you have to come to my secondary channel called Our Father's House of Prayer. And you can also hopefully find a new channel there on Rumble called Our Father's House of Prayer as well. This is Our Father's House of Prayer. That's the, the name of this church. And, and, and uh, we welcome you. We welcome your presence. We welcome your, your encouragement. We welcome your, your willingness to help build us up as we seek to feed you each and every day with that beloved manna that came down from heaven, that beloved word of God. Maybe that's what God was feeding Elijah with the ravens that bread that came down from heaven. And once he was full, once he was full, he was able to go out and be that man of God. God so wanted him to be. After Elijah went down and met with the widow, he began doing many mighty miracles. Jesus says the same, if you love me, you'll obey me, and you'll be able to do the things I do. The things I do. In the same way Peter had his chains broken off, was able to come out of prison and do the things Christ did. Christ in me be the answer to your prayers and there Peter was knocking on the door, just as Christ said he would. All you have to do is open it. Open it. And he will come into you. And that's where amazing things begin to happen. Not only in your lives, but in the lives of those who are in your family. As you go out into this next week, I, I truly pray that God will continue protecting over you, that his word would be a light unto your path, and that your homes would be filled with joy, your hearts full of laughter. In Jesus' name, amen. Hardly want to and our YouTube channel. I'll see you guys next Sunday. They're on Facebook. Cannot share our music with you because Facebook says we're not allowed to enjoy wonderful music. And so we'll see you guys next Sunday. And for those of you who have joined us here on YouTube and Rumble, and listen and enjoy this music. i